This is Tyler Uremchuk, the host of Oilers Nation every day. Tyler, what else do you host? You host uh, DFO Live, right? DFO Live every day with Frank Saravalli, Oilers Nation Radio, Nation Real Life, DFO Rundown, Blue Jays Nation Radio. You want to talk some Blue Jays squads? No, no, we should keep it on here. Well, you know I do. Did you see David Schneider's batting leadoff today? I, I love it, and I we talked about it on the on the Jays pod I recorded <laughs> this morning. It was like, it's time. You either go crazy, you go Vladdy, or you go with a guy who's got a 500 OBP in the month of May. I love it. Love David Schneider. I just want to throw out there quickly before we get to the hockey talk. My take that Vladimir Guerrero is basically just Billy Butler with a better name is aging like fine wine. I just want to throw that out there. If his name was something Smith and he had no famous parent, he we he would be viewed a lot differently. Or the Rogers propaganda hype machine. Like, no, they're totally, totally different. Anyways, okay, let's get to hockey, Tyler. Uh, game one from an Oilers perspective. How did it go for the Oilers? What do they need to do better in game two? I was sitting there when they were up 4-1, and I was in my head going, wow, the Oilers don't look that good. They're somehow up 4-1. Seelovs probably wants one or two of those back, but it was like, they are somehow up 4-1 right now with their C game. And I thought, I just started to have the thought process of like, if they can win this one with their C effort, and they can be a little bit better in game two, they could very easily steal both of these. And then, of course, it all came crashing down for the Oilers, the Canucks mount, the great comeback. The Oilers didn't get a shot for almost 25 minutes in that game. That was their C-plus effort to be kind, I think, to the Oilers. So they have a lot of areas they need to improve on tonight. But I, I think the take I had at the beginning of the series, if both these teams are at their A-plus, I think Edmonton wins. So it's on Edmonton to bring their best and not shoot themselves in the foot tonight. Stuart Skinner and the Nurse CC pair were in the middle of a lot of those goals against. What's your confidence level in... The Nurse CC pair and Skinner bouncing back. Okay, so let's go like one to 10 here on the scale. Confidence in Skinner bouncing back, eight, eight and a half. He's bounced back already nicely in these playoffs. Go back to the regular season. He had a lot of really good bounce back starts. I, he's a goalie. And one of the things I was most impressed with with his step forward this year was the mental side of it. There were a lot of games even where Skinner would give up an early one and then just lights out the rest of the way and would, would pitch, you know, basically a shutout minus the first goal, right? He'd give it up five minutes in. I loved his mental processing and the way he'd work through adversity. So it was weird to see him in this last game, take the bad penalty and then just mentally spiral, give up the bad goal to Garland, give up the one to Miller that I actually think was pretty weak and should have been stopped. So um, I think he'll bounce back. He's bounced back a lot this year. Strong mental goalie. Nurse CC, 1.5. Like it's in that range. They stink. Cody CC's not <laughs> good. They were trying to upgrade on him at the deadline. They couldn't do it. They tried to make the deal for Tanev. Calgary said no. Whatever the true story is there, whatever. It's been three playoff runs of Cody CC not being good when it matters most. It's been six months or four months so far this season where Cody CC and Darnell Nurse have not been good. They tried to go with Nurse DeHarnay for a little bit in the regular season. Didn't really work out all that well. When they play Stetcher and play him with Nurse, the results actually get better than they are with Nurse and CeCe, but for whatever reason, Jay Woodcroft was like this, and now Chris Knobloch is like this. They're stubborn. They're stubborn, and they will not move off of it, and I don't get it, and it's honestly, <laughs> if you're to list the things that could sink the Oilers in this series, Nurse and CeCe is at the top of the list. Tyler, you giving that Stetcher take sounds like every Canucks fan for every minute that Troy Stetcher was here. His results on the top pairing with Alex Edler were one of the only bright spots on such a weak team, and they never went to it unless someone was hurt ahead of them. Uh, Stetcher was phenomenal in his time in Vancouver. He was a great third pairing guy. He can play those top four minutes, and Harmon and I were talking about this yesterday as well. Like That's the move. You, you're struggling so much to move the puck out and to contend with the Canucks four check, which was all over the Oilers in game one, get Stetcher in there. He can move the puck. Like he can do it. Give him the chance. Anyways, it's just funny hearing, you know, now hearing Oilers fans having the exact same take that all the Canucks fans had while Troy Stetcher uh, was in Vancouver. Okay. Tyler, one thing I wanted to ask you about was this Leon Dreisaitl injury here. Uh, okay. So it's not equipment issues because he's a game time decision. So unless the chest protector is on its way out, um, he, it, it looks like something on his back. Like we heard him saying to the trainer, uh, it's my back, it's my back, but he didn't take any sort of punishment. It looked like, and I know it's a sensitive area and all that, but like, is this a pre-existing thing? What can you tell us about Leon's injury? No, he was healthy for, for the bulk of the regular season. So if it's, pre-existing thing they've been keeping it from the public and from the media uh yeah back thing i guess the fact he came out in the third period and looked fine i i think 
calms a lot of the nerves around Oilers Nation. And the other thing, too, is remember a couple of years ago in that BOA, he was on one leg. He was playing through a high ankle sprain. And not only did he keep going out there night after night, but he was still really damn good in that series against the Calgary Flames. So there is this uh, this you know line of thinking that we know Leon Dreisaitl can play through pain and we know he can be effective when doing it. Backs can be touchy. That part does, I think, kind of make Oilers fans and nation citizens a little bit nervous in that regard. But he came out spoke to the media today and was like laughing about it kind of. So I was, again, maybe it's a Homerish way to look at this, but <laughs> I was almost sitting there going, I wonder if maybe the Oilers aren't playing up how bad this is to think they're gaining some sort of mental edge. Like he was in front of the media laughing and joking about how it was a small incident, whatever. You don't send a guy out to talk to the media if he's not playing in the game that night or if there really is something that deeply bad with him. So I'm not super worried about dry settle heading into game two. I, I think he'll be fine. The Canucks did a pretty good job of limiting McDavid at 5 on 5 in game one. What did you see from him in terms of maybe why he was uh, quiet? And what is your, like, what's the key to getting him going in game two? It's getting the puck on his stick early, I think. And, and that's what the Canucks did a really good job of. If you can just stay attached to McDavid at the hip and you don't let him gain speed through the neutral zone that kills a lot of his chances. So I, I thought the Canucks did a really excellent job of that in game one. You want to attack him early. I, I think the longer Connor McDavid has the puck on his stick, and this will sound in, incredibly obvious, but the longer he has the puck on his stick, whether it's in the neutral zone or even in the offensive zone, you're just giving him more time to find that perfect seam somewhere that he's searching for. So I thought the Canucks did a good job getting on him early. I think the Oilers defensemen need to do a better job of putting the puck on his stick when they're and out of the defensive zone and through the neutral zone. And it's just all about puck control for Connor McDavid and puck possession. That's when he thrives in the game. So if he can get that going tonight, and I think he will, he's a guy who, again, was only held without a shot twice in the regular season. Both games, he bounced back with multi-point efforts. So he, he doesn't have back-to-back -back bad games all that often. And even against the Kings, when they kind of shut him down a little bit in game two and, and all the talk was about how they were zeroing in, basically three guys were, were swarming onto him at the top of the offensive zone when he was coming in off the rush. And what did he do? He adjusted going forward the next game. The Oilers popped home six goals. So um, I think just having puck possession for McDavid's going to be big. And he's, he's a guy who... Like a chess game, he he's he's seen the Canucks move now. I, I fully expect him to respond with his own tonight. What do you think the Canucks did well in that game? I, I know you touched on one right there, but like, what did the Canucks do well that didn't work out for the Oilers? Opportunistic. I, I think they smelt blood in the water a little bit there. And, you know, like even the Zadarov goal, like, yeah, you got Edmonton reeling hammer pucks on net. Like you could tell Stuart Skinner was rattled and it just felt like Vancouver did a really good job in that game of, when they got a little bit of momentum, they kind of perked up and they turned that little bit into a lot. So I give them full credit for the way that they they even kept their foot down once they got the lead, right? It's not like the Oilers suddenly had this great pushback and started getting all these chances. Vancouver did a good job weathering the storm. So the shutting down of McDavid, absolutely massive. Opportunistic with your chances was just huge. And the way that, again, they got the lead and didn't all of a sudden just sit back and go, okay, let's protect it. Let's play super defensive. They just kept going. And I think that frustrated the Oilers. What's the vibe check just overall in Edmonton right now? Because the the Oilers are clearly in copper bust mode. Uh, losing to the Canucks in this series would be disastrous from their perspective. Uh, of course, they haven't beat Vancouver yet this year, period. Uh, game one meltdown. How much pressure is on them? And, and what's the sense around the fan base right now? I, right now, I think the fan base is relatively calm. You know, you look at last game and it's like, hey, if Stuart Skinner makes another save, if Ryan Nugent Hopkins scores instead of hitting the post, like there were a couple different things that, that could have gone their way. And it was okay, C plus, C minus effort, whatever you want to call it. One goal hockey game with blatant bad goals that your goalie gave up. And I know the flip side of that coin is obviously the Canucks didn't bring their A plus and she loves let in a couple of goals that he's going to want back as well. But I do think for the most part, to answer your question, Oilers fans are staying relatively calm right now and the way i'll end this answer is by saying if they lose tonight and are down 0-2 you're never in trouble till you lose on home ice but panic will will start to seep into the fans if, if they lose again tonight Do you, okay that's interesting because that was actually gonna be my question is what if because like i don't know i just i, I don't know actually I, I don't know i guess you know the fan base better than i do i just in my head i'm like if the oilers go down 0-2 they're still heading back, and I guess you said it. You, you're only in trouble if you lose on home ice. I just, yeah, I, I don't know. I um, your margin I saw for air though, quads. If you if you if you're down two nothing, 
you mm -hmm. have to win them both at home or else you're probably cooked. So it's just the same thing with the Canes, right? It's like, okay, they were feeling kind of okay coming out of MSG. It's like we played two tight yep. games. We're down 2 nothing, but we haven't lost at home. Then you get a bad bounce in OT, and all of a sudden your back's against the wall. You're down 3 nothing, and like you're, you're not pulling off a reverse sweep on the New York Rangers. So I think just the big thing for the Oilers tonight is you want to feel like you have control of this series coming back to home ice, and the only way to do that is to even it up and steal one in Vancouver. And Nick in our YouTube live chat bringing up a good point. It's probably going to be panic button for the Oilers because that would be six straight losses for the Oilers to the Canucks uh, yeah. this year. So it's an interesting thing to think about. Uh, Tyler, before we let you go, you've been in Vancouver for a couple days now. What do you think of the city? What have you gotten out to do? I saw you went to the Stanley uh, Stanley Park Pitch and Putt. Yeah, so when we were in LA for round one, there was a par three golf course we wanted to play. And Jay and I... Um, made a bet that the loser has to buy the other one a Dylan Holloway jersey because at the time he was coming off his two goal game. So we finally made good on that bet yesterday, but I sadly lost. So I have to buy our boss uh, a Dylan Holloway jersey, which is very, very sad for me. Um, but the pitching part was great. We went to what was it called? Kitsilano Beach, I think. Yeah, that's what it was called. Oh. That, was, that was fun. I just sat and like crushed beers and we barbecued. And I love the oceans. So I love looking at the water and all that. That was a blast out there. Oh, yeah. Well, kids, kids Beach. Great, great place to visit uh, if you go out there. We don't have any mall like West Edmonton Mall. The, the, the biggest mall trip you can give us is that Metro Town is just awful. Metro Town has fallen from grace. But anyways, we won't start the mall talk. Uh, yeah, glad you're enjoying the city. Glad you're getting some good weather. Uh, nothing like a nice Friday, uh, nice Friday afternoon that's going to be nice and sunny with a Canucks and Oilers game at night. Tyler, I'll see you at the game tonight. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Sounds good. Thanks, boys. There he is. Tyler Yaremchuk, and he was brought to you fittingly by the Daily Faceoff Playoff Parlay Challenge. Get ready for that Daily Faceoff Playoff Parlay Challenge. Each game day, answer four questions. Pick the winning team, guess if points will be over or under, predict the first goal, and choose the highest scoring period. Daily winner snag gift cards while each round's champs pocket cash. Play now at games.dailyfaceoff.com and prove your puck prowess. It's fast, it's fun, and it's all about hockey. Canucks Conversation is live Monday through Friday, every weekday at 2 p.m. over on the Canucks Army YouTube channel. Make sure you like, subscribe, and interact in the YouTube live chat every day with us, folks.